Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be continuing our little journeys and explorations in the ATR. And we're going to be taking a look at how to get the FMS all set up for a nice little flight. Oh, this is nice, we're inside the concourse now. Ah, let's get started. So we're inside this aircraft, uh, we've done a couple little things. So last time we kind of talked a little bit about the hotel power and kind of how to get that all squared away. Today we're going to do things a little bit simpler because, because simpler, I think more simple is the technical word there. I'm not going to worry about it too much. But what we're going to do here is we're going to head over to our payloads and aircraft page, and we're going to go ahead and get ourselves some DC and AC power. Now, while we're doing this, of course, uh, we can always open up some cargo doors, the main door, and the service door, and basically have people come run over and uh, start loading us up with all sorts of good stuff. And you can just look at this thing, get a feel for just how tiny this airplane really, really is. Not a bad thing, though. Not a bad thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to float up to my overhead panel, and we're going to start pushing some buttons. One of the things you observe here is the fact that we have a new light that appears that says available for exterior power, external power rather, and available for external power on the DC as well as our AC bus. They call it the wild electric power. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pop on our battery, keep it nice and simple like that. You're going to get a bunch of angry warnings. Oh, I should have turned my volume down before pushing that. Whoa, I'm awake now. And then of course what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bring on each one of the powers individually. We'll start by bringing on the external power for DC. I can take a look here. I can see that I've got everything done. We're no longer discharging it. As a matter of fact, we could come over here and hit that and theoretically start charging the battery if it was in really bad shape. This comes off the inverter, though. Of course, we have no AC, so we can't do anything off the inverter yet. So I'm going to come over here now. I'm going to go ahead and flip on the AC wild electric power. Now, keep in mind, the moment you kick on that um, AC power, that gives us a lot more control in this airplane. Uh, we're going to have hydraulic power. We're going to be able to turn propellers and Heather them do all sorts of crazy stuff here. Now I'm curious. Ah, I'm not gonna worry about it. Cool. But the important thing here is that everything is active and it's kind of booting up. One thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look on the upper left corner. We're just gonna make sure our multifunction computers are coming up, which is exactly what they are. We're gonna get some warnings about things that are unlocked. We have our fuel pumps and all that. Not gonna worry about that too, too much today. I'm gonna go over to my middle thing. Uh, the electrical power is just the way that I like it. I'm not gonna worry about it too, too much. Again, they're all separated and isolated the way they should be. Engine start, I'm gonna make sure that's secure, looks good. Prop brake, I know it says ready because we have a hydraulic pump running right now. I'm not gonna set the prop brake. I just don't need to, I'll make sure it's off. And we'll flip on our nav lights as a courtesy to give people warning that we are using our hydraulic pumps. Swinging over here, I've got my hydraulics all set up. I could technically shut these off if I'm not using them, which is not a bad idea. You can actually see how all these systems are pressurized, which means if I hit them by accident, stuff is going to happen to the people who are near them on the outside of the plane. Keep that in mind. We've got some warnings about probes. Oh, we're not going to touch these. We've got to be moving. Anti-icing, going to leave that all alone. Airframe bleed, we're going to leave that alone. Of course, you have a little device, and so you can arm the safety belt light. We can hit our signs and all that stuff. Swing into the middle here, our main supply. You can just turn that on. If it's an emergency, you can always push that button too. Not worried about that. Cockpit temp, oh, you can tell it's the fall. It's uh, getting pretty cool in here. We're going to need to get the engine running to kind of warm us up a little bit. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Uh, there's not much we can do about it especially since the doors are wide open but yeah we're gonna roll with it now that we've done all that it's a good time to go ahead and get everything set up with our fms i'm gonna go ahead and smack that caution button so the fms on this thing is pretty easy to use uh, keep in mind if you don't have ac power it's a little bit more involved to get some of this stuff set up it's not a bad idea to kind of get it kind of going then come back and play with it but you'll see exactly what i mean in a minute so i'm gonna float down here first uh, it's an mcdu menu and i'm gonna go ahead and press the top item here so as soon as you do that, it's going to give you some basic background information. It's going to tell you what we're dealing with for the performance. This will tell you what data it is, what version, if you're looking for it. It'll tell you when your data has been updated, all that other good stuff. Uh, you'll notice you have a next and a previous buttons down here. We also have a menu button. Menu is just going to take you back here in the event that you get lost somehow. But for us, I'm going to go ahead and in it. It's going to tell us the date. It's going to give us the local time and everything along those lines. It'll also give us some information down here. Now, this is a much simpler MCDU than you're probably used to working. We'll get the radar starting up, by the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit my POS in it, which is going to allow me to, to establish where we are. You'll notice my last position does not agree with my GPS position. No surprise there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this one, which will copy it, and it'll actually put it into that little box there. Now, that's exactly the way that I want it. Uh, normally, it would ask us to execute, but you can see my init position is now going to be the same as my GPS position. Now, you'll see this little sensors button here. You can actually alternate between status and init. We don't have to worry about that too much. Instead, I'm going to go back to the return here. Now that that's done, uh, we can take a look at our nav data. Like I said, it's all up to date. If we had other databases in here, we could come here and fiddle with that. I'm not worried about it. We have our weights, we have our perf, and we have our units. Uh, units is basically going to let us kind of configure some things. You can see it's in Celsius right now. Weight, what is a kg? No, I know, it's kilogram. I'm used to either. It doesn't make much of a difference to me. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to head over instead to our flight plan init page. And when I pop this, it's going to ask us, did you want a secondary? Secondary, that'd be funny. Secondary, or would you like a primary? So I'm going to come up to root real quick. And you're going to notice it's going to ask us where we're going and where we're coming from. Now, we happen to be in Portland, Maine today. So I'm simply going to come down here and dial in the iCal code for Portland, Maine, which happens to be PWM. And now we're going to do a slash, which is going to let us go ahead and define where we're going. And we're going to be flying down to MHT today, which is a very, very, very short flight. MHT, PWM, MHT. I'm going to just click right here. That's a Manchester. Now, as soon as you do that, it's going to go ahead and light up. And it's going to turn yellow to let us know that it's not ready to rock yet. The reason it's not ready to rock yet is because of the fact that this is considered temporary at this time. If we wanted to save it as a temporary, we could basically dial it in. If we wanted to accept it, we have to press the execute button. Now, when you press the execute button, you're going to notice it's going to bring you to this, where it's going to basically scream at you saying, you haven't done anything yet, fix this. It's going to be looking for how we're going to be getting to Manchester. Let's go ahead and open up Sky Vector and figure that out. Now, if I take a look at my map here, or my chart, I should say, it's not a map, you'll notice that there's a pretty easy route to take here. If I take the, uh, looks right there, I can pull this one out of the way for a second. I'm not going to accept it. But you can see very clearly we have the Tango 314, which basically takes us perfectly right there. We also have the Sanford Seacoast Regional Airport that also has a VOR on it. So I'm actually going to grab that, drag that there. And I can see that we're looking for Kennebunk, which is E N E. Echo, November, Echo. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that and go run back here. Now, to add that as a particular waypoint, this is where things get a little interesting. Now, if you're familiar with the Airbus method, you come up here, and of course, you can select uh, whatever one that you want to do next. We'll get there in a minute. But for us, you're thinking you can click this. Not allowed. Instead, we simply dial it in. So if I do Echo, November, Echo, and go ahead and click right here, it's going to assume that's the next waypoint that I want, which is accurate. That is the next waypoint that I want. Now I'm going to do is come down here and press the execute button. And you can see it's going to give us some quick estimations here. It's not going to take that long. <laughs> it's five minutes and 36 seconds. That checks. But what we still have to do is we need to get rid of this discontinuity. Now, I don't recommend deleting the discontinuity just yet. I would actually wait on that until you basically set up all your departures and arrivals. So I'm going to set up my departure by coming up to PWM here. And I'm going to go ahead and dial in what runway we're going to use. Now, you notice I've got 11, I've got 29, I've got 18. Now, if I press the next page in the previous, if we had other choices, it would take us down those. But notice all of our standard runways are here. For us, the wind is basically coming due west today. So I'm going to pick runway 29er. Now that when I do that, it's going to ask me, would you like to do a SID and a transition? Uh, today, I'm not going to do a SID or a transition. Instead, I'm just going to boop, press execute. Now, what you'll notice here is it's added an altitude here, which basically says take off from runway 29er, climb up to 1500 feet, and then turn towards the Kennebunk, uh, that VOR that's just south and west of us here. So that's good. Let's go down to Manchester. Uh, Manchester is reporting about the same weather here. So uh, one of the cool things here is if I want to do an ILS approach or something along this way, ah, be careful what button you push. If you ever have this problem, by the way, uh, the nice thing is you can always brush flight plan and come right back to where you were. So I know the wind for them is more or less coming out of the west as well, because again, it's a pretty short flight. Going down here, as we can see, we don't have anything for 2-4. So unfortunately for us, that puts us in a bit of a fun spot as far as uh, picking a runway. There is an RNAV for 2-4, however. Let's see if there is an ILS for 2-4. I don't think there was one. Nope. So we're going to pick the RNAV for 2-4. It's going to ask us uh, what we'd like to do. I'm just going to say none. That's fine with me. I'm going to press execute. And what that will do is that'll just wavbo. <laughs> I love the names of waypoints. Down here, I should do a whole video dedicated to silly name waypoints here. And boy, can I do that. The important thing here is that we now have our approach all pre-programmed. It looks terrible in here. Don't panic. It's not scary. The important thing we need to do now is we need to get rid of this discontinuity. Now, if you come down here, you'll notice we have some buttons here. I've got a clear button. And now if I click clear and click on that, you'll notice it deletes. So now we've fix the discontinuity. And now that that's gone, I can just go through my little flight plan. I see no more discontinuities. I press the execute button. Everything turns green. Green means it's accepted. Yellow means it is temporary and not armed. Now that that's all set, we've actually got a lot of really good stuff here. I take off from 29er. I pop myself on a 275 heading for 1,500 feet. Then I go ahead and take a 238 heading over to Echo November Echo. I'll kind of bunk, then we go to Wabbo, on Gee, so on and so forth. Uh, one of the nice things, too, is if you come down here, you can see there's a button here where I can set it to ETA speed and alt mode. If you click that, it'll actually allow you to select your altitudes. So, for example, if I wanted to cross uh, any of <laughs> Kennebunk at a specific altitude, if I wanted to do, uh, I don't know, do 6,000 for some 
some reason. I don't know why I would do that, but I just boop, just like that. And you could actually set altitude cross, altitude constraint. I could come in here and say that I want to constrain it to 6,000 feet. Now, if I press accept here, and I actually go back to my flight plan like this, you'll notice 6,000 is now the altitude constraint at that particular location. It's going to expect us to hold that. And then of course, it's gonna expect us to go back down. We can naturally override this, but this is basically what the VNAV is going to want us to do. This is kind of handy if you want to dial in specific altitudes. And of course, we can swing back here, see how we're doing for fuel. You can see we start out with about 3,200 kilograms there. We go down here, we end up with about 3,000 kilograms. That's pretty darn heavy if you ask me. So the next thing we're going to do now that we're happy with our flight plan, it's looking pretty darn good so far, is I'm going to head back to the menu here, and we're going to come back to the beginning. I'll press my init here. And now it's a good time to go set up our weight and our performance initiation here. So I'm going to pop the weight button. And uh, one of the nice things about the weight page here, if you look carefully, is the zero fuel weight is 13853. Now, if I float my head over here real quickly and I go to payload, uh, one of the nice things here is you can actually look at your zero fuel weight, your fuel weight, and your gross I said gross weight, gross weight. And you can actually see that those numbers all agree with each other. The other thing you'll observe is the fact that take up trim, uh, take off is 1.6 in the up position. The reason that's important for us is that allows us to set the trim when we're getting ready to rock. Now, if I move my head over here, you'll notice my pitch trim is at 1.6 right now. One of the nice little things that they did for us to make our life easier is there's actually a button for that. So if you don't want to sit there fiddling with the trim button on your joystick, you can actually hit that button and it'll immediately set your takeoff trim correctly. Trust me, you're going to need all the takeoff trim you can get in this thing. It's a little ridiculous. I'm going to press the return button. And then lastly, we're going to go to perf init. Now, what this does is this allows us to dial in all the critical factors of our flight here. Now, this is going to let us put in our flight factor. Maybe we're burning more fuel than usual. It can basically select different alternate airports. And of course, it lets us pick our cruise altitude. So for us, we're going to be doing a cruise altitude of a 6,000, which, like I said, it's a very, very, very short flight. Now, the cool thing here is if I wanted to, I could actually change the cruise mode in here. Now, if you remember, this aircraft has a rather unique system as far as maintaining power. If you come over here, there's a power in management switch here. And basically what you do is you crank this thing to the position that you want. So for us, we do take off, then you can do climb, cruise. And when I stick it to cruise, it's going to be looking for this particular value to decide what it wants to do for its performance. Now, there are no other pages to performance here. We're basically ready to rock for this particular moment. So if I were to go back a page here and return, you'll notice everything on board here is completely programmed and we're now ready for our start. So now that everything's been programmed, uh, one thing we could do, just as a quick little check here, is you do have a nice little map here that you can kind of take a look at and make sure everything's kind of what you expect it to be. You can see that the kind of bunk right there is sitting there at that 6,000 feet. Remember, we just dialed in that constraint. That's also going to be our cruise altitude. We could set that quite a bit higher. Yeah, we could do 15,000 feet and come into a Manchester that way. But we'll keep it nice and simple for today. And that's just kind of one of the nice things that you have. One thing we have here is if I zoom my head out just enough, is you actually have the ability to go ahead and change your zoom. Now, if I go like this a few times, you can zoom, I can zoom out all the way. You can actually preview your entire flight as well as all the relevant constraints along the flight here to make your life a little bit easier. If that's something that you're looking to do, you can also see I accidentally hit the radio there and I'm changing the radio channel, but I'm not going to worry about that just yet. So next time, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, button everything up and get this thing started. And then we're going to head over to the runway and get flying. Enjoy. Enjoy.